All right, here's another project I just picked up. So, got a bike to work on and sell, I guess. But, uh, anyway, this is a 1990 FXR, is what I've been told, but looks more like an FL, doesn't it? So, I anyway, lowered it down quite a bit. It's been sitting for a lot of years. So, 2012. There you go. So, I have to clean this thing up and uh, see what it looks like condition wise. Everything on it is polished. It's all aluminum. These are all aluminum parts here, it looks like. Some cases are all polished under here. Cylinders, heads, everything's polished. Spent a lot of money on this bike. So I evidently worked on this back in the 90s, but I don't remember anything about it. So, so I don't know. Anyway, it's uh, I remember the guy's bike before this one. It was a shovel head and it was a big stroker motor and very fast, very low. Old street racer back in the day. So I assume this thing is probably uh, pumped up too, but I don't know. The owner doesn't remember. Getting old, going away, losing memory. So. So anyway, something real cleaned up, and then uh, like that sporty, we'll go through a little bit. Probably not that to degree though. And sell it to someone. So anybody looking for an FXR that doesn't quite look like what FXRs are these days, then yeah, here's a bike. So got to figure out what the uh, what year the actually bike is. I think the VIN number on FXR is up on, on the neck up under here. Because <clears throat> it is not on the frame here. It's been powder coated, so there's no more original sticker. It's just tape over here. <clears throat> uh, there's something hidden under here we're not supposed to know about. You know, it's been on there a long time, whatever it is. Cancer under here or something. That tape is old. Yeah. yeah. Don't know what's under there. It's hiding something probably. Big nicks in the frame. Who knows? Yeah. So I don't see a VIN number anywhere. And a motor number. I have to trace out that motor number. Let's see what that is. There's an e, uh, EFLL. Ugh. Maybe the book will tell us what EFLL is. The parts books all have the VIN identification in them, the breakdown. EFLL. Let's see, when we only have the motor number, not the. We don't have all the stuff out here. Why? Production day year is way out here. Okay, there's 90. L. L is 90. Right there, 90. So it's LL. So that makes it a 90. So it is a 1990. Uh, regular production date. It's got FXR footboards on it, steel. <clears throat> it's got the steel pedal on it instead of aluminum. So that means it's either an old cop bike, most likely, or FXR T. Those are either EC or EG. And uh, that's over here, which we don't have. See, that's in the actual fin number of the frame. All well, we got is the motor number. All right. Well, either way, it's uh, supposedly it's a 1990 FXR. Uh, I don't have parts to put it back to an FXR, so we're just gonna leave it alone. We'll clean it all up a little bit, get it running, see how good the motor is, and then um, it'll be a project for somebody else to play with. You may need a good project. See, this is actually the kind of bike I like, not not these modern dirt bike looking FXR everybody likes these days. But this is low down, go out and have fun. Yeah, still rubber mounted.
All right, well, there it is. We're going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to get Ben over here to do some polishing, buff it up a little bit, make it look a little better, give it a wash. It was inside of a garage this life, so it's, there's no corrosion on anything. It's just dirty. It needs a good cleaning. So, anyway, that's what it is. So, there you go. California Fresh. All right, I got the seat off this thing. It must have a Dyna ignition and it's got a Dyna sticker on it. And it's also got a twin coil over here, so it's a single fire Dyna with the old style coils and covers and stuff over here they used to have back in the 90s. So, that's what it looks like on this side of the bike. Yeah, they have any chrome, including all the brackets here. So it's a pretty nice looking bike in the day. This wiring is not quite up to my standards here. So, I'm thinking there might be some issues in here. So the first thing you do is disconnect the damn thing. It's dead anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Mm, the bolt wasn't all that tight either. The light went off. I think we're going to put some new cables on this. We're definitely going to put a good battery in here. This battery is a piece of crap. And it helps us up to an interstate quality. This looks like a die hard quality. It died hard. Let's see if I used a Phillips shooter, it would be easier. Okay. So that's off. So if they're trying to start it with this cable, we got problems. <laughs> and if they had this just for an auxiliary power source to the over to here. Yeah. The smallest wire they had was too damn big. that up. Yeah. There it goes. See if you have the right tools it goes quicker, but yeah, use what you got. You got a 10 millimeter wrench, I'm gonna use it. So this is a nice hazmat project here. Alright, I'm tired of being that slow. I'm going to break down and get a screwdriver. Because this is not cutting it. So that goes back over there. Probably should put some air on the tires too. They were flat when I got it. Where'd my tools go? There they are. Yeah, I was rolling the bike and it had flat spots on the tires. So that was not a good sign. So there you go. All right, we got interruptions. We'll be back.